what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel now look at these lines and beautiful question we have here on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says for all natural numbers x and y the square root of 8 to the power of the square root of x minus the square root of 5 to the power of the square root of y is equal to 39. actually we have to look for the values of x and y so our first step is to write this square root of 8 as 8 to the power of half. Remember, the power of half also means square root. So that's our first step. And also raise this to the square root of x, as we see there, minus. We're going to be doing this one the same way. This is going to be 5 to the power of half. Now raise to the power of the square root of y equal to 39. Now, our next step is to multiply these powers. Remember from indices, whenever I have a base raised to a power of m, and this power is raised to a power of n, this means a, then m times n, powers multiply. So let's do that. So I'm going to be doing this. Half times square root of x, I'll be having the square root of x over 2 minus 5. Half times the square root of y, I'm going to be having the square root of y over 2 equal to 39. So our next step is to say let this value here, which is the square root of x over 2, be equal to, we can therefore say m. And we can use the second one, which is the square root of y over 2, and represent it with what? n that means whenever i see this square root of x over 2 i'm going to be representing it with m and the square root of y over 2 i'm going to be representing that with n so let's do that real quick so this is 8 so i'm going to be writing 8 here to the power of m minus 5 to the power of n equal to 39. so our next step is to make something like this 8 to the power of m now, I'm going to be raising this to the power of 2 over 2. Actually, I'm doing 2 over 2 because 2 divided by 2 is still 1. So, minus 5 to the power of n. I'm going to be doing the same thing here. Raised to the power of 2 over 2 equal to 39. Well, the idea behind this is because I want to make this a difference of 2 squared. So, that's the idea behind this. So, let's do this in a more simple way. So we have 8 to the power of, remember what we said, powers do multiply. So this becomes m over 2. Now multiply by this one at the top, 2. So it's still the same thing when they multiply. So minus, I'm going to be doing the same thing to this one. So this becomes 5 to the power of n over 2. Now raise this to power 2. So that is it. So equal to 30. Nine. So now this is looking well and good. To make this even more simpler, our next step will be to say let a be equal to what I have here on this bracket, which is 8 to the power of m over 2. And let b be equal to what I have in this other bracket, which is 5 to the power of n over 2. So let's substitute that here. So I'm going to be writing a squared minus b squared equal to 39. You can see that this is a squared minus b squared equal to 39. And this is actually the difference of two square we are talking about. So let's move forward. So applying difference of two square, as we can see here, is a plus b times a minus b. So this is our difference of two square equal to 39. So we can see that we have this factor, multiplying this factor to give 39. And actually, these are positive factors. Remember that we are dealing with natural numbers here. So we are only interested in the positive factors of 39. So, and from what we can see, you notice that this one carrying a plus, which is a plus b, is greater than this one carrying a minus, a minus b. So now, let's look for the positive factors of 39. So let's do that. So for a plus b and a 
minus b. So what are the positive factors of 39? We'll say for the first factor, which is a plus b, which is going to be the larger one, I have 39 times 1. So 39 times 1 is going to give me 39. So we've got this first case. Now, another one is, let's say, 13 times 3 is also going to give me 39. You notice that a plus b carries the larger factor. And a minus b carries the lower factors. Are you seeing that? Very good. So these are two cases that we're going to be working with. So for the first case, let's call that case 1 is when a plus b is equal to 39 and a minus b is equal to 1. So let's subtract. So subtracting, I'm going to be having 2b to be equal to 38. Now to get the value for b, we're going to be dividing both sides by 2 so that b will be equal to 38 divided by 2 is 19. So let's get the value for a by putting this value of b in any of these two equations. So I'll choose the first equation, a plus b. I've already got the value for b to be 19 equal to 39. So I'm going to be moving this plus 19 to the right-hand side to become minus. So 39 minus 19. And I have the value for a to be equal to 20. So for the first case, the value for a and b, we got a to be 20 and we got b to be 19. So let's try this out. Recall that we said 8 to the power of m over 2 is equal to a, right? And we also said uh, 5 to the power of m over 2 is equal to b. Let's see if we're going to be having an integer solution, which is precisely natural number solution here. So substitute the value for a in this first one. So a to the power of m over 2 is equal to a. What is our a? a is 20 in this case. So you notice that we're not going to be having an integer solution here, which is natural number here. So this first case will be rejected. I'm going to be rejecting this first case. So let's focus our attention on the second case. When a plus b is 13 and a minus b is 3. So let's write that down. So I'm going to be writing case 2. So for our second case, a plus b is equal to 13. Is equal to 13. And a minus b is equal to 3. So let's subtract. So subtracting, I'm going to be having 2b to be equal to 10. So divide both sides by 2, you notice that b is equal to 5. Now let's put the value for b in any of these two equations. So let's choose equation 1. So I have a plus b is 5 equal to 13. So a will be equal to 13. When I move plus 5 to the right hand side, I'm going to be having negative 5. So a here will be equal to 5. No, a here will be equal to 8. That is it. So that means we got another solution for this second case for a and b. So for a, a is 8 and b is what? b is 5. So now let's use this value and put it here to see if we're going to be having an integer solution, which is natural numbers. Let's go. Okay, recall that for 8 to the power of m over 2, this is a, and 5 to the power of n over 2, this is b. So let's get the value for a from here. So we have 8 to the power of m over 2 to be equal to a. What is our a? a is 8. Very good. I'm going to be having an integer solution here. Now, 8 can be written as 8 to the power of 1. So equating powers, we have m over 2 to be equal to 1. And from cross-multiplying, I'm going to be having m to be equal to 2. So let's do the same thing for b. So for b, I have 5 to the power of n over 2 equal to b. What is the value for our b? Value for our b is 5. So I'm going to be putting 5 there. So remember that 5 to the power of 1 is also 5. So since the base are equal, we're going to be equating powers. So n over 2 is equal to 1. So cross multiply, I'm going to be having n to be equal to 2. So the value of m is 2, 
and the value of n is also 2. Now, let's go back and recall that we said the square root of x over 2 is equal to m, right? And we also said that the square root of y over 2 is equal to n. So let's substitute the value for m and also the value for n so that we can be able to get the value of x and y. So let's do that for the first one. So the square root of x over 2 is equal to m. What is our m? We got m to be 2. So when we cross multiply, I'm going to be having the square root of x to be equal to 4. So taking the square of both sides in order to cancel out this square root. So I'll take the square root of the left hand side, I also take the square root of the right hand side. Now notice that this square root can go off with this square, so leaving behind x equal to 4 squared is 16. So doing the same thing to this one, which is the square root of y over 2 equal to n. Our value for n is also 2. So following the same process as we did in this first case, I also have the value for y to be equal to 16. And these are the value for x and y. Well, if you have a shorter and better way to solve this question, please do not hesitate to share with us in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.